we will now move on to our next presenter, Geetika Savadesh from CMS College. Good afternoon, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. I'm Geetika Savadesh, postgraduate student in the Department of English, CMS College, Kotte. Paper that I'm going to present is titled as Rain Soft Malayalam Cinema, Symbol of Rain in Perimara Kalam, Vaishali and Karik. We don't see nature with our eyes, but with our understandings and our heart. Nature has a lot to do with living beings. It's a key element. Nature, which provides life for many living creatures and the whole world, also functions in art and literature to emphasize the significance of nature and nature's elements in the life of each individual. This is a strong human nature relationship, which is unbreakable. This interconnection between nature and human is well portrayed in literature and film. Nature is also so closely associated with humans and because of which the presence of nature in any literary piece of work or film plays it as yet another protagonist. Nature also provides us to have multiple and controversial interpretations out of it. It is really difficult to define nature because for each person nature defines something peculiar or else nature is culturally constructed. For some, nature and its elements provide happiness, refreshment, love, but for some, it can trigger their sensitive side. Nature has got too many dimensions and these dimensions helps one to study nature and its constitutive elements more deeply and specifically. Ecocriticism is simply the study of a relationship between literature and physical environment, which emerged at the end of 20th century. In ecocritical studies, the term anthropocentrism means the view that all organisms, including humans, are part of a large biodiversity or network of community whose interests must constrain or direct or govern the human interest. Another important term in ecocritical study is anthropomorphism, the attribution of human feelings or traits to non-human beings or natural phenomena. With the help of nature's element, writers and creators were able to portray human emotions to its core essence. When attributing our human characteristics or emotions to nature's object, the result which one literary piece of work provides will become highly appreciable. Anthropomorphism implies a projection of human desire to make nature sympathize with humankind or oppositely it might be done in the interest of dramatizing the claims or plight of the natural world. There are many branches of ecocriticism. Rarely has cinema in general been viewed through an ecocritical lens or has there been much evidence in the main venues of ecocriticism of the sustained application of ecocritical strategies to film and cinema studies. Film representation of nature opens up a new form of enjoyment for audience. As nature definition is highly subjective, nature in movies will certainly have different dimensions. Film is a strong medium with which one can portray strong na nature-human relations. Because the thing being depicted on film is similar to the way in which we may view it in real life. Films using its technologies captures the essence of nature. So through the film, rep film representation, one is emphasizing on the authenticity of nature as well as the nature decorating some crucial roles in movies. Rain is often used as a symbol in movie to show different emotions of characters. It is often associated with romance, happiness, misery and sorrow. All these mixed emotions are very well conveyed to the audience through single frame where it is raining. There are many movies that depict how nature has come into a person's life. We have also seen the presence of rain and sea becoming the core of many films. Elements of nature are responsible for portraying many emotions from a person's life. What rain in cinema has to say to a viewer is a very personal meaning and every film is different in how each person perceives nature. A good example of how nature is intermingled in a person's life can be explained by looking into the use of symbol of rain in movies to tell the story. The kind of storytelling that rain explains is about the true emotional state of humankind once again strengthens the human nature relationship where such movies will open a window to which multiple interpretations of characters are possible. Sometimes rain acts as yet another protagonist in movies. Sometimes it's just become an omnipresent narrator and sometimes even the silence of rain gives multiple meanings for a movie. Perumal Kalam is a Malayalam movie directed by Kamal in 2004. The movie title itself means the season of heavy rains. From the very beginning itself, the characters are accompanied with rain. There is wetness throughout the movie. 
Rasiya being one of the central character of the movie learns that her husband Akbar who is working in Persia accidentally kills his friend Raghu and Persian government punished him with a death sentence and the only way out to save Akbar was to get a letter of forgiveness from Raghu's wife Ganga but Ganga was not ready to give the letter and we can see Rasiya literally begs for a sign but towards the end when Rasiya lost all her hope Ganga came and signed the letter and finally there is a positive resolution where all the characters Razia Akbar Ganga and their daughters meet interestingly at the end it's a clear sky without rain movie was significant for the presentation of social issues like religion where both the central female characters belong to two different religion one being a muslim and the other who lives in anagraha movie excels in depicting the social issues where there exists a clear demarcation between religion Both the ladies are represented by religion, but they are equal in the eyes of nature. Here, rain is not only posed not only posed to represent the internal turmoil of Rasiya, but also to show Ganga's emotional state. The tears of Dham is symbolized through rain. Rain accompanies Rasiya in her home as well as Ganga in her agrahar. Separated by religion, but united by nature, even the music and lyrics associated with the movie has something to do with the rain symbolism in the movie. The songs and background music of the movie also convey the internal turmoil of the character. The music done by Jay Chandran in the movie gives a crystal clear idea about how rain used as a symbol to explain the sorrow of the characters. The audience here is able to sympathize with both the characters. Towards the end of the movie, interestingly, there is no rain, but again symbolizes that there is a positive resolution finally taking place. Rain element in movies usually symbolizes romance, happiness, etc. But this movie shows the other side of rain. where rain itself is sympathized with the two lady characters in the movie which in turn makes the audience to understand the characters deeply rain can be something that give happiness for some for some it can be a symbol of many other emotion here when the rain stops pouring then all their problems too so director excels in representing out different dimension of rain in this movie sometimes even the audience might have felt that when will this rain stops pouring or when are these two characters get peace of mind As, as Kerala has got a definite rainy season, this movie title shows a period of rainy season. An optimistic view in, is also added to this using rain, declaring that after every rainy rainy season, there is a clear sky when all this agony, sorrows gets washed away by rain. The next movie is Vaishali, the period drama film directed by Bharathan. This movie is actually an adaptation of a myth in Mahabharat. In Champapuri's King Lompada Lompadam was cursed by Brahma. that his kingdom would not experience any rain in the coming years in order to get rid of this curse rajguru asked king to send somebody to forest in order to bring rishis ringan to perform yagas to bring back rain and this someone here should be a young lady so that she can seduce rishis ringan vaishali the young dancer and chaste woman who is also an illegitimate daughter of king sets her journey with her mother to forest there she succeeds in sending rishis ringan and he performs yaga in angarajyam as a result rain touches the land Vaishali's mother thought if the king gets pleased by their help for the kingdom to accept her as his daughter and also he might arrange a marriage between Vaishali and Rishisringan but when the rain pours people become so much excited and it was a huge crowd and king asked Rishisringan to marry his legitimate daughter Shanta Vaishali and mother watched the marriage being done but they couldn't reach towards the rain as a crowd followed the newly birthed chariot Vaishali and her mother are trampled in the stampede where her mother dies eventually Vaishali left alone hurt broken and devastated at what had happened but nobody bothered about her any more what lies ahead of her remains unknown as she is left to find for herself here again one get to know one of the dimension of rain what are becoming the core theme of the whole movie when it become an essential component of the movie through the movie the creators are trying to emphasize the importance of nature in lives of human beings where again that bond between man and nature becomes strong this severe drought is representation of times then people were least concerned about preserving nature so finally to to a yaga they brought back rain but rain here is having entirely two different dimension for the characters the kingdom and the king rejoice with the arrival of rain they kind of worship rain and by the arrival of rain back to the land the people are at almost ex ecstasy they were dancing and singing so their rain strictly meant for happiness but on the other hand the two important characters vaishali and her mother who were inevitable for the kingdom for rain but later they become invisible for the others for them rain doesn't bring happiness but a loss but loss and sorrow 
they were not able to rejoice for the arrival of rain because for them rain doesn't provide any sort of happiness instead why shall he lose her mother and even her life is nowhere now rain being the core theme the core character who brought back rain is ignored towards the end so within the same movie the audience can see how nature is perceived by different people in different circumstances at first like all the other characters why shall he also was excited in bringing back rain to land but towards the end one can see how rain meant different meaning for different people this is solely because with respect to the place time and circumstances there is differences in perceiving nature in this movie also music does a very clean job to show the two dimensions of emotions one of happiness and the other of sorrow karik is a famous malayalam youtube series which basically show comical elements of day to day life the portrayal of day to day life events again substantiate how nature works with the life of individuals films and web series is a pure representation of individual and also his interaction with nature in karik the evidence apart from the comical aspects can derive many serious life situations and emotional state of human beings when representing it through such popular medium the creator excels expressing it to a larger audience the audience also in turn gets so much connected or they can relate to the things represented in it In an episode of Kairik called Sebastian de Villaicha, the main character Sebastian is working hard to complete his movie making. After so many conflicts, he started his work. One evening, when he was totally confused by all those financial and technical crises, it starts raining, and he and his friends run towards a shelter, watching on cursing rain. Suddenly, to a phone call by the next moment, lifted Sebastian's mood. He, under that ecstasy, started to praise the rain, saying. Wow, what a beautiful rain. Here the rain remains constant, but what changes is the way in which the character perceives it. Rain providing two different dimensions is as evident in the single scene of the entire episode. This happens with every single individual in the world. When in a happy mood, one will enjoy the natural environment, but the same natural beauty can become a curse in some other moment. Thus the two different way of perceiving nature is well attributed to this series. All these three movies presents rain as the central theme. using rain as an important character the creator excels in narrating the whole plot of the movie anthropomorphism a branch of ecocritical study is getting highlighted in these three movies human feelings and emotional states are well conveyed through the cinema from which one get aware about how a single thing can have multiple perceptions in the first movie perimadakalam rain accompanies all the scenes where rain is yet another character which sheds its tears with the two lady characters here rain is not romanticized but it is used as something which explains the human emotional state audience as well as the characters get revealed once the rain stops pouring in the second movie why shall i rain is presented as an essential element rain is the core theme of the movie it has got two distinct dimensions throughout the movie and that too depending upon the social position and circumstances of characters rain doesn't provide happiness for vaishali and her mother but on the other hand it was a main factor of happiness for others finally in karik it depicts how a normal man is closely linked with his nature very nature human nature relationship is well drawn out of the episode where his perceiving of nature depends upon his mood here rain determines in what emotional state is a character is nature and its relationship with human beings are well depicted throughout the three movies here movie and rain element both has got mutual connection that is one explains the other rain speaking for the character opens a new form of enjoyment for the audience thank you for listening thank you thank you so much geetika that was a wonderful presentation uh, we will now call um, elizabeth panikar for her presentation elizabeth are you there yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. My topic is water in New Testament. Water is a basic element of life and the important element of the world. When God created Earth, the Bible says the spirit of God hovered over the face of the water. Genesis chapter one, verses two. There are many references to water in the Old and New Testament. As Old Testament, which is foreshowing the New Testament, tell about the use of water in two dimensions of life. One in the physical sense. which means for the daily use and in the spiritual sense which is for the purification which is an important focus of the test he shall bathe his flesh in living water shall be cleansed leviticus chapter 15 verses 13 the torah teaches the first five books in the old testament shows how people would be purified by the spiritual bath of water
while coming to the new testament water is connected with jesus life and water is assumed as the dimension of rebirth because water can bring life the new testament many instant are related to water the baptism of jesus turning water into wine by jesus first miracle jesus walking on water the healing the blind man on the pool of shilohi jesus as a living water fishes and miracles of 135 fishes the holy bible shows the powerful woman mother mary who stood under the cross when his disciple ran away she is the one who withstand her faith throughout her life first miracle in jesus in the new testament was done by the request of mother mary and when elizabeth hears the greeting of mary the baby lamb over her womb and the G- and elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit and she exclaimed with a loud cry blessed are you among women and blessed is your fruit of your womb luke chapter 1 verses 42 43 when we study the new testament the book gave an idea of purification in it is different from the old testament the book says the real purification happens when holy spirit came to us and in the old testament that follow certain rituals were performed by the purification but when it come to the jesus ministry rituals became only a part of purification the religious rituals of jewish tradition so shows us that water play an important role in purification but a new order of the purification came from the jesus the whole world were cleansed by, from the sins by the power of holy spirit which are the same characteristics of purification by water as as we we know the mother mary is a agent of purification purification when we look at the jesus first miracle in gospel of john we would understand that it is a mother who prompt jesus to do miracle jesus is doing this miracle by turning water into wine in the sixth pot of use for purification which is a symbolic representation that changed wine which is a symbol of jesus holy presence in the ho- most holy sacrament and when we look at the birth of jesus he takes his body and blood from the mother so so so, so she is a tabernacle in the old testament where jews kneel down before the holy presence and believe that their salvation come from she is not only the mother of god but all the co partner in this alley history mother is an agent of jesus like the small stream which led to the formation of the vast ocean the feminism is a revolt against the unequal treatment given to women this movement is based on the equality of women and men in society women are treated unequal in the community and they consider lower than men this emotion grow in the mind of women and from there the movement of women started the feminist theory is an extension of the feminism into theocratical fission of philosophical discourse things exploring the femi- feminism includes discrimination objectification etc and the miracle of jesus is in first miracle where the john portrait the john the is apostles was one of the 12 apostles jesus who was the son of zebedee and salome he is known as the john the evangelist john of apostles and beloved disciple he has an elder brother james also an apostle of jesus bible refers these brother, brothers as bavanegas which means the thunder john was a was a one of the apostle who lived long he is a author of the gospel of john the three epistles of john and the book of revelation The Holy Bible is one of the most popular book in the world and written by many authors and who was inspired by the Holy Spirit over many years to many different group of people. Bible is a content and it's made up of two large collection. The Old Testament talks about the relation between God, the Father and his beloved people is Friday. And the New Testament depicts the life of teaching of love of Jesus the living God. the old testament we can see many miracle by god the father which is related to the water which is distant from the new testament and also which for four shows the new testament when we come to the new testament the first miracle by jesus in john the apostle is giving a very many instant that new testament 
is having a great change in the system and it promotes feminism. In, in the Old Testament, we also see the miracle related to water that, that God sent Moses to Egypt to save his people and led them to promised land. The king of Egypt does not allow them to go. The God sent 10 epidemic that to that land and one among us is turning water into blood. For this, God tell Moses to do to go to Pharaoh and his servant, lift up the rope and strike it on the on the Nile. After the after that, a river turned into blood, and all the inhabitants in the Nile died, and the people cannot drink from it. On the other hand, another miracle in the Old Testament is also related with the water, is that God let his people out of Egypt. When they fled out of Egypt, King Pharaoh was following them. them and try to capture them and the people of Israel lift their eyes and they were in great fear and this and the people of Israel called, cried out of the Lord and complained to Moses and Lord tell Moses to lift the rope and strike over the sea and divide it and people go people of God go to the dry gra ground through the pe gra dry land on the other hand, we see in the New Testament, the Son of God, Jesus is turning water into wine, which is the first miracle according to the Gospel of John, St. John, the Apostle. In this miracle, on the third day, there was a wedding feast in Cana of Galilee, to which Jesus and his disciples and the mother were invited. On this occasion, there, were, there the wine went out. Mother of Jesus said to them, him that they do not have wine. And Jesus replied, what does that have to do with us? Many, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servant, do what he says. Then the Jesus says to them, they collected the water in six jars of stone, use jars of stone used for Jewish process of purification. Then the, then he said to them, draw out of and take it to the steward of the feast. When the servant tasted the wine and do not know where it come from, he called all bridegrooms and said to him that have kept the good wine until now because at the feast they do serve the higher quality wine and then the lower quality. This miracle has a great significance in the Bible because it is the first miracle in the Gospel of John, St. John which led Jesus to his public ministry and or it is a miracle that revealed Jesus Christ to the outer world and miracle that led his disciples to believe in him and much more significant were related to this incident. In this miracle, even the disciples were invited to the wedding feast, but only the mother Mary who, who was one noticing the problem led to know to the Jesus. Mother Mary is the one of, who introduced Jesus to the public ministry from him to do. As the Jewish tradition, women has a lower status in this society and they were considered secondary citizen. The citizen. Okay. When we compare this incident with the Old Testament, we know that a greater significance has been seen in the uh, seen in the miracle of turning water into wine. In Old Testament, we see the God called prophet Moses. God does his mission through Moses. When it comes to the New Testament, Jesus directly interferes in the mission. When when he comes to Jesus turning water into wine, the first miracle, first miracle. And uh, there is a great involvement of Mother Mary in the first part. Like the voice of the God Father Mo Moses here, the Mary is informing Jesus to do miracle when water went out. So here we see the Mary holding her voice on the New Testament, which can be seen in the Old Testament. On the other hand, Mother Mary is a feminine feature, feature that we figure that we can see in, in the New Testament. The Old Testament portrays Moses as the first one to take part in the Salvi history, getting people out of the cruel Salvi slavery in Egypt. When it comes to the new order, God chosen the young girl, which is approximately twofold younger than Moses, for God's son to take place in the world. While looking to the public ministry, we begin with the interve interventions. The New Testament feminine figure is debtor with Jesus to announce the audience to good news, which is related to the truth. 
the purification of the whole world and not all not only by the water but all but the changed mind jesus by the power of the holy spirit in the speech in 2040 pope francis read the model of mod- eternity for the church in virgin mary who is the fullness of the time conceived through the holy spirit and gave birth to the son of god on concluding we know we must know that on the old testament we see a we see water as a commodity to purification and coming to the new testament what uh, water is is symbolically uh, refer to the holy spirit which do the purification and there is a great significance in the mary's role in the new testament thank you thank you for hearing me patiently thank you everyone thank you so much um okay uh, we will move on to our next presenter since we don't have much time uh, mridula vijayan mridula are you ready yes okay you may present is it visible yes it is visible um, good afternoon all i am rudila currently doing my post graduation in english literature from dk college amlagiri uh, the title of my paper is the ocean perspective a reading of yan martel's life of pi mm. through this paper i am trying to explore the significance of ocean in this work life of pi the heart of a man is very much like the sea it has its tones it has its tides and in its depths it has its pearls too these are the words of winston mangop from the letters of winston mangop published in 1914 uh, as the quote says uh, ocean is the perfect metaphor for life it can be calm and still but also fiercely turbulent during a storm typhoon or hurricane it is a vast mysterious body that has existed since the beginning of time we must learn to ride the crashing waves of life life also includes peaceful strolls uh, in the smooth and sailing that the receding tides have left behind and uh, life is also like the ocean sometimes it calm seas and everything is smooth sailing other times we have to swim against the waves and ocean is also an important figure in literature uh, samuel uh, hermes melville moby dick ernest hemingway the old man and the sea and yan martel's life of pi the story of noah's ark etc the work life of pi uh, is written by yan martel a celebrated canadian writer with the resounding success of his third book life of pi martel became an internationally recognized author and his work is an international best seller novel and uh, this work awarded the booker prize in the year 2002 and also nominated for both commonwealth writers prize for best book and uh, governor general uh, literary award it was also uh, adapted for film the film life of pi uh, was released in 2012 directed by ang lee Uh, the movie won four academy awards in 2013 including best director uh, this uh, movie is filled with spiritual references visual poetry and questions uh, that seem to have no definite answer uh, when comes to story the novel tells the story about a 16 year old teenager named pi who survived for a long time uh, that is 227 days after a shipwreck while stranded on a lifeboat in the pacific ocean with tiger with a tiger the royal bengal tiger named richard parker uh, is from his uh, father's zoo his father on the zoo when he is 16 years old uh, his family decided to immigrate to canada taking uh, their uh, large family with them but uh, tragedy uh, tragedy strikes when the cargo ship carrying them and sinks during a terrible storm and uh, this is a narrative of trial uh, and self discovery and spiritual development the story portrays the torment from the ocean and the transformation of pi from a calm boy to a strong pain yeah. the ocean surrounds 
the uh, pipes during the journey helped him very much for the for the transformation and yarn matter says the host pair of opposites is boredom and terror sometimes your life is a pendulum swing from one to the other the sea is without a wrinkle there is not a whisper of wind the hours last forever you are so bored you sink into a state of apathy close to a coma then the sea becomes rough and your emotions are dipped into a frenzy yet even these two opposites do not remain distinct in your boredom there are elements of terror you break down into tears you are filled with dread you scream you deliberately hurt yourself and in the grip of terror the whole storm you yet feel boredom a deep weariness with it all only death constantly excites your emotions whether contemplating it when life is safe and stay or feeling it when life is threatened and precious life on a life boat is not much of a life it is like an end game chess a game with few pieces the elements couldn't be more simple nor the stakes higher physically it is extraordinarily arduous and morally it is killing you must make adjustment if you want to survive much becomes expendable you get your happiness where you can you reach a point where you are at the bottom of hell yet you have your arms crossed and a smile on your face and you feel you are the luckiest person on earth why because at your feet you have a tiny dead fish physically and mentally it is a very significant the theme of water plays in life of pi the effect that water has on pi is mentioned early in the novel on page 7 quote the first time i turned a tap on it's noisy wasteful super abundant gush was such a shock that i become incoherent and my legs collapsed beneath me and i fainted in the arms of inners and god in addition pai is actually named after his aquatic guru's favorite swimming pool paris la piscine molitor martel is careful to show that only pai is drawn to the water strongly when he arrives quote i was named after a swimming pool quite peculiar considering my parents never took to water and got in the film also pai was named after a swimming pool but not just any swimming pool a pool that could cleanse your soul pai says if you want your son to have a clean soul you must make him one day to swim in the piscine molitor his uncle teaches him to teaches him how to swim and the uncle says a mouthful of water will not harm him then later the same pai fights against the sea as a warrior for him the sea acts as a life giver and also the life taker hearing the ship groan from the pressure of the sea hearing pai yell his family's names as he watches them sing with ship victims of unforgiving uh, fury of the storm is enough considering the sea as a great metaphor of human life and what he asks why would a lotus flower hide in the forest the beautiful lotus flower can grow in the dirtiest waters so that we can also rise from the harsh realities of life be allowed to the experiences of enlightenment self actualization and rebirth each of us at some point cast into a pool that cleanses our soul as the story portrays the torments from the ocean and the transformation of pai from a calm boy to a strong and courageous young man and pai and richard parker are nearing death their boat becomes uh, their boat comes to a mysterious island and they eat and are saved through the pools that are both life giving by day and life taking by night the strange island is shaped like a person it is symbolic of pai himself finding balance of both sides of himself his moral conflict faith and reason and uh, the endless ocean uh, here depicted is a symbol of Uh, life and also his inner struggles 
that in the film the director used many colors in portraying the sea to symbolize certain emotions besides yellow and golden which are used to symbolize victory and wisdom like him finding water on or him taming richard parker and uh, this paper the ocean perspective uh, a reading of yan martha's life is an attempt to analyze the significance of ocean in the work and uh, how martha captured the sea in its true essence the ocean in this novel acted as a symbol of hope and survival played an important role in the development of the plot throughout the novel thank you thank you so much mrudula that was a wonderful presentation um we will move on to our next uh, presenter uh, kartika sudhakaran from st thomas college kartika are you there yes ma'am okay you good afternoon begin. woman as pure as water the eco feminist study of sara josephs adi the term eco criticism was first coined by william brogan in his critical writing literature and ecology ecology an experiment in eco criticism in 1978 sara joseph adi is written in malayalam and translated by walson tambo in english and titled as gift in green adi is a village which is surrounded by mangrove forest and water bodies In the Adi village, both men and women worked unerringly to raise gold from the swamps, without compromising the existence of the natural resources. They had established a close connection with nature and showed their kids that forest cover and water bodies were integral sections of their lives. After the paddy cultivation was over, women grew fish in water, which was an alternative source of their livelihood. they had knowledge that the available resources also belonged to their future generation and hence captured only what was necessary for their survival they led a sustainable way of life that did not compromise the abilities of future generation to meet their basic needs kunimadu shailaja kumaran dinakaran chandra mohan ponmani etc are the main characters kunimadu was a beautiful young girl in her sweet 16 who embraced the adi as her birth her life was meaningless without the without the water life of adi she was the beloved of a youth named kumaran he was always consumed with the promises of better livelihood in the city kunimadu and kumaran's parents tried out most to transform his mind but kumaran was adamant he sold off his properties and went to kunimadu's house one night he took her virginity and promised to return with uh, return when he had discovered his future as time passed by kunimadu realized that she was betrayed by kumaran who would never keep his promise she redeemed his uh, his sole property with, with the money and jewels kept for her wedding she told her to transform it into a prosperous land she experienced the pain of deception and hoped that there would no other man in her life kumaran's return to adi after 35 years marked marked the downfall of nature the exposure and modernity of the city were molded him to <coughs> him in him into an affluent and highly influential businessman he planned to transform adi into a modern village accessible to latest technologies and infrastructure for the easy execution of his plan kumaran brainwashed some of the youth with his promise of increasing job opportunities and advanced way of life gradually the village turned into two extremes between those who supports the campaign against kumaran those slightly with his high influence kumaran began to smoothly develop adi scientific way of fish fish catching destroyed tiny fish in their embryonic stage birds and butterflies began to flee the dying mangrove forest and chemicals started sleeping into the paddy fielding that have fed generation over hundreds of years adi which was once known for its crystal clear water was now filled with savage and pathogens when when things began to split out of control kunjimadu lost her patience she began to feel suffocated in such a polluted environment she led a single handed protest against kumaran and his people she stood in the midst of the water of adi immersed from neck to feet she pledged that until and unless adi was regained she would not quit her fast until death her 
determination become the source of inspiration for the women folk. Rapidly, they did all they could to clean Adi. That time, the men of village under Dinagaran pressured that other pressured the authorities to take action against Kumaran, who uh, uh, who usurp, usurp their properties. However, the forces behind him were powerful. Gradually, the men also joined with Kunyamadu and her friends to reclaim the lost Adi. In the end, the government, uh, the governmental authorities accepted the people's claim to uh, claim to the properties of Adi. Adi retained its wholeness and purity under the arrival of modernity in the discourse of, of Kumar. The developments he pro propounded for the welfare of Adi transformed it into a filthy dumping yard. In, in another case, Kunjumadu was an innocent village girl who was deeply in love with Kumar. She hoped that he would recognize the virtue of Adi one day. Taking advantage of her blind love, he possesses her virginity. Kumaran established mastery over Kunyamadu's body and died the same with Adi. Both nature and woman became the new victims of male supremacy. Another character is Shailaja, who works as a sweeper in a hospital, cries about the waste that she dumps daily into a large toilet bowl inside the hospital. The waste collected by all sweepers are ended up in a water body close to the hospital one day. One day, Shailaja climbed the steps of the massive fortification that separated the hospital from the lake of death behind it. A security guard noticed the hut at the top. She looked at the water body she saw placentas were putrefying in the water and they were not burned in the earth nor did they decompose to become manual for trees. Shailaja became monitoring all these irritating circumstances, plans to leave Chakangandam and goes to Adi. However, Adi also becomes polluted and lacks space for a peaceful survivor. She wants to protect the village by protesting against modernism. She comes to know that Kunyamadu also has an idea of protesting against the destruction against Adi. They both unite to face the problem. Kunyamadu, with all her daring courage, steps into the contaminated water remaining there and refuses to come out. The bond between nature and woman of Adi is clearly revealed here. It is as if she is ordering the, the nature to give them pure water for their survival. Kunyamadu and Shailaja are bold women of Adi. Then start to cultivate, they start to cultivate party in the fields across the village. This gave a good result at help. Uh, and helped Adi to regain its greenery. Kunyamadu and Shailaja powered the way for Adi's miraculous recovery by using their full strength. People, people belonging to Adi happened to witness the glory of the land. The author discloses a heartrending image of the way Consumering drive rates, the purity as well as the virginity of the land, the ruthlessness and greed of men destroying the purity and the existence of water and other natural resources that form the basis of life. From the past, it is apparent that the community had uh, affectionate feelings towards the mangrove forest that they called the green bank. The forest provided an enchanting world from its serene nature and cool waters from the noble Joseph Lippens. The people of Adi are the children of soil where they had surrounded their lives in the green bangle mystery. Unlike the male characters of the novel, female disclose, disclose their intimate connection with the mature and they believe that destroying nature takes their only force of, source of refuge, refuge away from them. The female characters in the novel are against the enterprises that focus on changing the way, changing the way of life in Adi with the premise of improving the way of life. Adi, Adi community had placed men at the center where, where they hold all powers over women and nature. Shailaja, who is married to Chandra Mohan of Chakangandam, is the other major female character who discloses a strong connection between women and nature and their alienation and exploitation for, from men. From the novel, the character note with the filthy, nauseating atmosphere of Chakungandam, which is highly polluted. All the water sources that were spread up front of the house are highly polluted. Shailaja does not like adjusting to maladjusted environment, and her self-determination makes her uh, return to her parents' home. 
like other female characters in the novel shailaja is the portal destroying the bridge built by kumaran she believes that the construction are a threat to the environment and she tries tries her best to prevent the depletion of nature from an analytical perspective shailaja and her marriage to chandramohan not only discloses her inter interconnection as a woman with nature but also accentuates men as the root cause of societal and environmental destruction the life and struggles of the people of adi are specific to the context and quite earthly in its portrayal the the plot pivot the decay death and and the phoenix like regeneration of adi in the book she uh, in the book she writes that there had been a con a covenant between them and water the fish the frog and the crab crab the birds and butterflies the reptiles the grass and the bushes and the mangrove forest were all signatures to that water covenant water holds an endless fascination for the community wherein it's grown a, a continuum of experience in which events pass from the past past to the present and to and to the future is evident in the novel sara joseph comments that life is seemed to be to them like a deep bottomless lagoon they had no food no clothes no shelter but they only have is water before the engro engrossment of adi by mafias the place was so wonderful and beautiful and people lived in perfect harmony with nature women used to used to make friend friendship with nature and they conserved and, and preserved it as they they were aware of its value not only for human beings but also but uh, but for all creatures that share the same land the aspiration of gaining power and prosperity of men led by kumaran led the outsiders inhabit the village where they sold their land uh, for for the so called development they only made the they only made the ones charming village barren and charmless thank you ma'am thank you all